Hi everybody, this is Connie coming to you today. I just wanted to share a little bit and um, going forward I want to share little snippets of my story um, of why I call myself the lupus rebel. Um, sort of living with lupus, I was diagnosed 19 years ago and back then there was very little information about what it was. So it was a very strange type of an experience but more importantly prior to diagnoses I was a thriving young woman in a doctoral level study at a medical university and I thought I pretty much knew it all at the time um, and um, I knew everything from a standpoint of textbook and theories and then being afflicted with all these symptoms that kept on piling up from just severe headaches to extreme fatigue to where I can't get up and just projectile vomiting to stomach upsets to severe headache that was debilitating, but more importantly, I had a lot of hair loss to a point where I had like a big bald spot, specifically on this left side. It was called alopecia, and I had all these rashes all around my joints. And so at the time, I didn't care about what was happening inside. I think I was less concerned with the severity of, or the implications of this disease but I was more concerned with outward appearance, as in like I really needed to have my hair, I really needed to look nice, I didn't want everybody to look at me and, you know, just be, uh, just look at me with sympathy. I really, really ran from that, nor I didn't want to see my friends or anybody, and so I just became a hermit, and I remember going really deep within, because I didn't know what to think of it. I wasn't diagnosed yet. I was. I didn't even know if I was dying tomorrow. But anyway, I fell into this deep depression. So fast forward a few years, I got married abruptly, and then um, I got pregnant right away. And it was sort of an experiment in my mind because, I don't know, sort of having a death sentence, kind of overcoming. I had begun to get my hair back, and I was barely vertical as in like, my outlook in my life because having been like such a planner in the past knowing what I needed to do to get into school and what I needed to do to maintain school all the curricula was written out for me so I used to be a planner where my yearly planner used to be my best friend because I knew exactly where I was going to go and then now gotten married I didn't even know if I can safely have a child but after I got married, it was a honeymoon baby, and so I got pregnant, and boy, was I scared. And did my uh, doctors really scare me? But despite anything, it was an experiment in my young mind and a scared mind. And then I got pregnant, and I delivered a baby very safely. It wasn't until um, 15 months later, after my first son was born, oh, and by the way, they told me not to breastfeed. I chose to breastfeed because I I did, just didn't trust doctors at that time, having been in a medical institution, having lots of friends going through the medical school training. I had close friends in that training program, and then I knew my rheumatologist really, really well. And I just felt like they quite didn't understand knowing the disease in a textbook, and then really knowing the heartaches and the struggles that we as patients face from day to day. You know. Um, just the pain and fatigue, we can sit here and talk about it, but do you really know what it feels like to wake up in the morning and feel like the cement is coming down on you and then you have to do everything in you to like get up and out of bed, like that stiffness and that chronic pain-like feeling and then having these severe pains that just won't go away and then just bear you down, right? So these kind of feelings to getting pregnant and then having a baby and then all they can do was give me corticosteroids and offer me um, antidepressant medications and, of course, opioids to kind of modulate my pain. And then I just felt like, you know, it was almost a, it was almost a dismissive thing in my mind because I felt like they weren't helping me. Did I show up to the appointments? Yeah. But a part of me was like, no. Nope. And I guess that's the rebellious nature because I felt like if something's not working and I know clearly this is what they're going to offer me and I know that it's not really helping my body and I don't know what the future holds but I really wanted to rewrite my story right so I started to experiment in my body and so I felt pretty confident getting pregnant I was as healthy as I can be all my hair had started to grow back 
And I was as healthy during pregnancy, and as I mentioned, I started to breastfeed despite their, you know, um, apprehensions about what the outcome is. But the truth is, it's my baby, it's my body, and I felt like that was the best thing for me. And so I did exactly that. It was a successful baby. My boy is now 14 years old, a month ago, and he's as healthy as can be. Am I vigilant about his health? Absolutely. But I kind of know what to do to build on his gut systems and everything, all the trial and errors that I've participated for my body. So having said that, 15 months postpartum with my first pregnancy, I really um, hit rock bottom because I had developed what's called a um, nephrotic syndrome and I blew up like over 10 pounds overnight. I was in Chicago training for another postdoctoral program. I was supposed to be there for two weeks and I had just weaned off my baby who's 15 months old from um, you know breastfeeding because that was kind of long enough. And so I was over there and then I remember getting a massage and I was face down for about an hour and when I stood up my eyes were like out of its socket like so swollen and I knew something was wrong so I called my uh, rheumatologist at the time. It was my new rheumatologist that had just gotten here in Georgia because that was probably about a year after I moved to Georgia. And he pretty much said, you know what, you've got to drop everything, I need you home right away. He didn't like the sound of things because I had my legs, I told him I had pitting edema and everything, nothing was working and my eyes had gone puff, puffy. If you notice, that's a sign um, and symptoms of kidney fail failure. So then um, I had to fly back right away and then he immediately said, he looked at me and he said, I need you to go see a nephrologist like right now. He was so panicked in that office and I remember thinking, oh my gosh. And so he called the nephrologist, made an appointment right that day and then I had to go over to the hospital. Fast forward to getting a kidney biopsy and the experience of that I'll share with you later. But Anyway, all my plans to come back to California to visit my family were all shot because they said I could not. It was a dire situation. I had to fast forward into my nephrologist's office to say, do you want to freeze my eggs? Do you want to have more kids? Because they advised that I have no more kids and all that. And so I just remember my time just froze around me. Um, and I didn't really understand uh, what a dire situation this was. All I can think about is the love for my child and what these doctors were gathering together to tell me. While I knew that that was helpful, I knew that I really needed to help myself to make sure I'm going to combat this thing. And then I think deep within, that sort of, um, that sort of the uh, stance that I took back then. So that was in, um, that was probably about four years after I got diagnosed and that was in 2003. So I'm going to share with you my paths along and what I needed to do to defy all the conventional stuff that were thrown at me because as I read all the blogs and all, all the posts that you guys share with me, thank you so much for that by the way, um, it makes me want to share my story because I think if we kind of share these stories we sort of kind of understand, oh my gosh, she, she really knows my pain. She really understands my fears. And I just want to tell you, um, my patients come into my clinic and I've been practicing in this space for probably about, in this space, for over 10 years now. I'm sorry, in this particular space, about three years. And I had another office down the road um, for 10 years prior to that. And they always look at me and they think I'm so healthy and that I can possibly not know. And I used to think that them thinking that way was the way to be until recently I realized, you know what, I have overcome a lot and there's been a lot of things that I am um, implementing in my life so I should share that.